What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to use Ponage. Now what that is, is it's an application for the Mac that lets you have uh, put on custom firmwares under your iPod Touch. So you can already have it jailbroken by just restoring your iPod and you can have an install application on there and everything. <clears throat> it's really nice. And another point of it is you can also have custom boot screens and a restore screen. So that's really cool. And I'm going to show you how to use that today. So first thing you're going to need is you're going to need an iPod Touch in firmware version 1.1.4. Now you can use Ponage to jailbreak firmware 1.1.4 and 2.0. But there's no point in jailbreaking 2.0 because uh, none of the third party applications work on it. Because uh, firmware version 2.0 is going to have different frameworks for the iPod. So there's no point in having it right now until it officially comes out. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. But just letting you know you can. Alright, so let's get started. So like I said, first you're going to have to have a, uh, an iPod Touch in firmware version 1.1.4. Or an iPhone. And I just restored to 1.1.4. So now let's move on to the next step. Uh, you're going to have to download uh, Ponage from the site that I'm going to give you. So I'm going to do that right now. So just save it to your disk. And let it download. It's like 15 megabytes, so it'll take about a minute. I'll come back when it's done. Alright, when it's done downloading, just hit open. And it will unzip it for you. And then it's right there. It's called Ponage Tool. So now what you're going to have to do is make sure that your iPod Touch is connected to your Mac with the USB cable. And then just double click the Ponish tool. And it will open up. Just click open. Alright, now you're going to see a screen that looks like this. Now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find the firmware on your computer that, or fir firmware version 1.1.4 on your computer. So what you're going to do is hit browse IPSW. And what I did is I found the firmware on my computer and I just put it on my desktop. If you don't know where it is on your computer, then I recommend that you download it again. It's not that hard, just use Google to find it. It won't be that difficult. So when you find where it is, like I just found mine, just double click it. And give the application a second. All right it recognizes it as the 1.1.4 firmware so now next step now you're gonna hit the iPhone button and what this does is this is gonna pwn your iPod touch so that you can uh, put custom firmwares on it so just hit that button and just sit back and wait make sure again that your iPod touch is connected via USB cable so I'm gonna let this process run it's gonna take uh, like two three minutes so I'll come back when it's done Oh, yeah, make sure that iTunes is closed. So let me do that real quick. It says your iPhone iPod is in normal mode. Now it says put it into recovery mode. So how you're going to do that is... I'll try and do this one-handed. All right, you're going to have to detach your iPod Touch. Then turn it off. Hold the power button. And then slide the power off. All right, when it's off, now here, let me set the camera down for a second. You have to hold the home button while plugging in the USB cable and keep holding the home button. And just keep holding it. All right, perfect. And if iTunes pops up, just quit it. And now just hit OK. And now you're gonna see some script run on your iPod Touch and just give it a minute and I'll come back when this is done. Shouldn't take too long. Alright, and when it's done, it's gonna bring you back to the home screen like this. And if you noticed, uh, at the end of the process, when it was turning the iPod out again, it had a custom boot screen, which was a uh, pineapple. So yeah, that means it successfully pwned. Now the next step is creating the custom firmware. So what you're gonna do is click the button that says IPSW Builder. And don't worry about the first tab that says general, that's for iPhones only. So then you can go to custom packages, and these are the three things it automatically installs. BSD subsystem, installer, and OpenSSH. If you don't want them installed, then you can just uncheck them. 
but I want all three of those installed for me, so I'm going to leave them checked. And then the next tab is custom logos. Now, these are kind of tricky because they're kind of hard to make, but here's the specs that you need for them. They need to be PNG files, and they need to be 320 times 480 pixels, and need to be less than 100 kilobytes, and a couple other things that they need to be. But if you don't know how to, then you can look online and you can find some pretty neat ones. So I didn't make any uh, any uh, custom logos because I'm not really good at Photoshop. So I'm just going to use the default ones. And these are the default ones, the pineapple and then the, that weird picture. I'm not even sure what that is. Now when you're ready, if you've uploaded uh, custom logos or whatever, and you're all set, you're just going to hit the button OK. And it's going to let you name whatever you want it to be and where you want to save it. And just save it on the desktop and click save. Now this process is going to run. It's going to take between 5 and 10 minutes and just let it do its thing. It's going to do a few things and I'll be back when it's finished. Alright, and after a few minutes it will be finished and you should see it on your desktop or wherever you saved it. Now it's the part where you're going to restore your iPod with the custom firmware. So exit out of uh, opponent and you're going to open up iTunes. Make sure that your iPod is indeed attached by USB cable. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hold the option key and hit restore. So let me set my camera on for a second. Hold option, hit restore. And then wherever you saved your firmware, I saved mine on my desktop, you're just going to find it and you're going to double click it and it will restore your iPod with that custom firmware and it will automatically be, be jailbroken. So let me uh, let this restore and I'll come back when it's done. And once your iPod is done restoring and turns back on, you'll notice that you now have the installer icon. So there you go. That's a really simple way to jailbreak and uh, restore your iPod at the same time. Now, since you have your the the firmware that you put on was also pwned in a sense. So if you restore, you don't have to uh, do the pwnish uh, the pwnish thing each time that you want to install a custom firmware. Like, okay, say you stick with this firmware and then you want another custom one, so you install that. Then you don't need to repwn your uh, iPod. You just need to uh, just uh, restore with the custom firmware. But if you restore to a regular firmware and then you want to switch back to the custom firmware, you have to repone your phone or your iPod. Hope that makes sense. All right, so there you go. It's uh, pretty simple, and good luck with it.